Once upon a time, in a dense forest teeming with life, a cunning and hungry wolf prowled in search of his next meal. He was a formidable predator, feared by all the creatures who shared the woods with him. His reputation was built on his swift and ruthless ability to capture and devour his prey. One fateful day, the wolf's sharp instincts led him to a fresh kill, the remnants of a deer that had fallen victim to his relentless pursuit. With hunger gnawing at his belly, he began to devour the flesh of the fallen animal. The wolf's sharp teeth tore through the tender meat, and he savored every bite. Yet as he greedily feasted, a small but troublesome bone found its way into his throat. Panic washed over the wolf as he choked and gagged, unable to swallow or dislodge the stubborn bone. The pain in his throat intensified with each desperate attempt to free himself from this predicament. Frantic and desperate, the wolf raced through the forest, howling in agony, his eyes wide with fear. He beseeched every animal he encountered, from the nimble rabbits to the majestic deer, for help. But fear of the formidable predator prevented them from assisting him, and they fled at the mere sight of his gnashing teeth and pained expressions. Time passed, and the wolf's torment continued. He raced up and down hills, through thickets and streams, in a desperate quest to find someone who could alleviate his suffering. But no one dared to approach him, for his reputation was one of ruthless aggression, not compassion. Finally, the wolf stumbled upon a serene clearing deep within the forest, and there he came face to face with an unexpected sight, a slender crane with a long, graceful neck. The crane's feathers shimmered in the dappled sunlight, and its eyes held a gentle, knowing wisdom. Please help me, the wolf pleaded, his voice raspy and strained. I'll give you exactly what you want in return. The crane regarded the wolf with a measured gaze, contemplating the risk of assisting such a feared creature. But the crane was known not only for its elegance, but also for its compassion and sense of justice. It decided to lend a hand, or in this case, a long neck. I will help you, the crane agreed. But first, you must promise not to harm me in any way. The wolf, his pain overshadowing his predatory instincts, readily agreed. He lay down on his side, his powerful jaws spread wide as they could go. The crane approached cautiously, its long neck extending toward the wolf's. With utmost precision and care, the crane maneuvered its slender neck into the wolf's gaping jaws, inching closer and closer to the source of the wolf's agony. It took great skill and patience, but at last, the crane managed to grasp the troublesome bone with its beak and gently extracted it from the wolf's throat. Relief washed over the wolf as the bone was pulled free. He could once again breathe and swallow without pain. Grateful beyond words, he turned to the crane and said, Thank you, kind crane, for saving my life. You have my deepest gratitude. The crane, having fulfilled its duty, now requested the reward that had been promised. You pledged not to harm me, the crane reminded the wolf. I ask for nothing more than your word to uphold that promise. The wolf, despite his cunning nature and fearsome reputation, recognized the value of the crane's trust and the debt he owed for his life being spared. Be joyful the wolf added, grinning and showing his teeth, not in aggression, but in a display of camaraderie and newfound understanding. You've inserted your head into a wolf's mouth and then taken it back out safely. From this day forward, I pledge to honor our agreement. Kindness and greed cannot go hand in hand, and I have learned that lesson well. And so, in the heart of the forest, two unlikely companions parted ways. Their encounter a testament to the transformative power of compassion and the importance of keeping one's word. The wolf, once feared by all, now carried with him a valuable lesson in humility and the realization that kindness could indeed coexist with the wild instincts of the forest.